Okay, so we've talked a little bit about phrase structure. Maybe I can go back to the previous slide and we talked about this X-bar structure uh, where we have a whole phrase breaking down into two components, a specifier and the X-bar part. And then the X-bar part breaks down into X and a complement, the X being the head of the phrase. Okay, so this applies to different kinds of phrases, noun phrases, verb phrases, so on and so forth. Um, the question is, how can you tell exactly like what is a phrase and what kind of phrase are you dealing with? Uh, so there are some tests you can use that are described in the textbook um, that can help you figure out if a group of words constitute a phrase, uh, constitutes a phrase in a sentence. So I'll just walk you through them. <clears throat> so number one is called substitution, which is where you can substitute um, a whole phrase or kind of uh, replace it in a sentence with a shorter expression. Uh, and you can only do that with um, shorter expressions of the same type of phrase as the original, basically. Uh, so a pronoun um, is like a type of noun and that you can use those to substitute NPs in a sentence or noun phrases. Um, so the coach wanted a picture of the book. There's a lot of nouns in this in a very short sentence. So there's coach, there's picture, and there's book. Each one of them winds up being the head of its own noun phrase. So you can say she wanted a picture of the book where she replaces the coach, or the coach wanted it where it replaces uh, a picture of the book, or you can say the coach wanted a picture of it where it equals the book. Um, so you can use pronouns to help you do this for noun phrases, and you can only use pronouns for noun phrases. I will point out as well, you could also replace uh, something you suspect is uh, an entire noun phrase with another known noun phrase. So we know the book is um, a noun phrase, so you could replace a picture of the book with the book too. The coach wanted the book. That works fine in the same syntactic frame as well. Um, so something easier uh, than maybe a pronoun um, or more directly related to a noun phrase is another noun phrase, and that might help you out if you're trying to figure out what um, is or is not a noun phrase in a sentence. Uh, there's other um, substitution phrases you can use for different types of phrases. So VPs can be substituted with the phrase do so. Sorry, <coughs> keep coughing, I don't have the virus. Uh, VPs can be substituted with the phrase do so. So the coach dropped the ball and the professor did so as well. Um, or the coach drops the ball and the professor does so as well, so on and so forth. Uh, did, does or did so replaces drop the ball in this particular case. Um, PPs, uh, prepositional phrases, can be substituted with there. So the children waited at the corner. At the corner is an entire prepositional phrase headed by that preposition at. The coach, the children waited at the corner and we waited there too. There replaces at the corner. Um, what the, where this doesn't work is for um, either non-constituents for words that are not really forming a unit in a phrase or for the wrong constituents for sort of the wrong mixing and matching of um, verbs and prepositions or lexical categories or whatever, right? So the coach dropped the ball and the did so too. Uh, that doesn't work. So it's trying to replace coach dropped the ball, all that with did so, which is a verb phrase. Coach dropped the ball is not a verb phrase by itself. So you can't um, make that substitution. It doesn't work. The children waited at the corner and we waited at there too, and not really. Um, there, in that case, it would be replacing uh, the corner, which is just a noun phrase, so you can't replace that with there. Or the coach dropped the it. That doesn't work. Um, so uh, I'll point out, if we go back to X-bar structure, um, in certain cases, you can kind of uh, replace um, the X-bar part of this with other, say, pronouns or substitution phrases. So um, we'll see a couple of examples, but say often forgets his hat. The coach often forgets his hat. Uh, so in that case, you'd have a verb phrase headed by the specifier often and then forgets his hat. So forgets is the head and his hat is the complement. And you can say the coach often does so. The coach often forgets his hat and the assistant coach often does so as well. You can replace this with um, a substitution phrase, which is one reason why um, this is um, these two are kind of tied more tightly together um, in this entire phrase structure. Uh, or you could say, the coach likes that book and I like this one. Um, so uh, one can replace this X-bar unit while still having a specifier of like this. Um, so those are 
couple of reasons why, um, substitution reasons why, those two parts of the phrase, head and complement, are analyzed as being more tightly uh, structured together, uh, to the exclusion of the specifier. Uh, another test for phrase structure you can use is movement. So sometimes, sometimes constituents can be moved to another part of the sentence. This has limited utility in English where we can't, the syntax is usually pretty tightly structured. Uh, we can't move things around that much, but in certain cases you can make it work. Uh, so let's say we have a sentence like he hated the Jedi Knights. You can, if you want to emphasize the Jedi Knights part of that, say the Jedi Knights he hated. Uh, and this whole noun phrase, the Jedi Knights, moves to the front of the sentence. Um, some things you can't really move by themselves, on the other hand, are you can't really use uh, the end bar part of that noun phrase like Jedi Knights, he hated the, you can't leave this the stranded over here by itself, that doesn't work. Or you can't say the Jedi, he hated Knights, so this isn't functioning as a constituent there, or at least you can't show it according to um, these movement rules. Um, it works a little bit different for VP movement as well. Like I said, this has limited utility for um, English. Uh, so hate the Jedi Knights he did. If I, you try to grab this entire nat verb phrase, hated the Jedi Knights, you can't really move it by itself as it is to the front of the sentence and say hated the Jedi Knights he. That doesn't work. Um, you can, however, make it work by sort of replacing um, the verb phrase here with this sort of helping verb did. Um, or auxiliary verb as it were. Uh, so hate the Jedi Knights he did. That works. Um, this is kind of just reminding you that this is where it started off from. Um, so yeah, if you use this sort of movement, you can use this as sort of proof that you're dealing with a, a verb phrase um, in this particular case. Um, the examples from the quick write at the start of this lecture, we ran up the hill, up the hill we ran. That works, that shows you that up the hill uh, is a constituent um, it's in particular a uh, prepositional phrase headed by this preposition up and then there's a noun phrase within it too. Um, so that works. What is the last test for phrase structure you can use is coordination. So conjunctions uh, are words like and, but, or, or, and they coordinate phrases of the same type. So um, I'll give you an example of noun phrase coordination. You can say I like romantic sunsets and long walks on the beach. Um, always a winner on dating profiles on the internet. Uh, so romantic sunsets is a noun phrase, long walks on the beach is another noun phrase. They work together fine because they're coordinated with and. Um, we went over the river and through the woods. We're coordinating two different prepositional phrases. That works fine. Or they want to eat pizza or play video games. These both work together fine as well. You can't do it with, I'll give you one more example for adjective phrases. The blizzard was very intense but surprisingly short. Those are both adjective phrases, and we've got and, but, and or as examples in each one of these coordinations. So they all work fine in those terms. Uh, but uh, you can't get this to work with mixing and matching different kinds of phrase types. So I like romantic sunsets and surprisingly short is surprisingly bad. That is an ungrammatical sentence because you're trying to coordinate an MP and an AP there. We went over the river and play video games. That's garbage. Get rid of that. They want to eat pizza or long walks on the beach, so on and so forth. The blizzard was very intense, but through the woods, I don't know. So this, um, these tests, these three of them, uh, tests for phrase structure can be used to kind of demonstrate that, yeah, this unit of words or string of words is a unit functioning together in a sentence. And you can also sometimes use it to show that a string of words is not functioning together as a unit in the sentence. Um, or at least this particular coordination um, these coordination examples can also kind of show you that if you could compare uh, a string of words to a known um, unit, then you can also kind of verify, well, I have a noun phrase like that book, and I want to say coordinate with romantic sunsets, uh, just to make sure that romantic sunsets is a noun phrase as well. And you can say, I like that book and romantic sunsets, so on and so forth. That works too. You can use it to prove that something is or is not um, a particular phrase type in a sentence. Okay, so just to give you a few example trees, I normally walk through these on the board. I have been writing on a little whiteboard for um, my other class that generally works out not very well at all because, not just because of uh, my handwriting, but because of the uh, technological situation. So I'm not gonna do that, uh, but I will give you uh, some example trees in the slides of what they should look like. So if I'm talking about the book or that book, uh, what you should be able to diagram for it is that this is a noun phrase headed by book. 
I like that book, I like him, so on and so forth. We can kind of verify as a whole noun phrase, headed, or sorry, it's headed by book, and then the specifier is a determiner, the. Uh, that is another determiner, I, I like that book, or this is another determiner, I like this book. Um, this is a pretty simple structure. What would you do with a picture of the book? Uh, and you're welcome to think about it before you move on in the video, but I'm going to show you the answer on the next slide. So if you want, go ahead and work out the answer on your own. Uh, but what it should look like is this. So a picture of the book is a noun phrase by itself. I like it. I like the book. I like a picture of the book. Those all work the same, uh, all work equally well syntactically. Uh, what we're adding here, so we have a determiner, uh, we have a noun. It's the head of the phrase, picture. And where we add the extra stuff, it's all the complement of that noun. So picture of the book. Of the book here is kind of just giving you more information about the picture itself. It links up as a prepositional phrase to this n bar slot here underneath the whole np um, node at the top. So the prepositional phrase uh, itself has a noun phrase embedded in it. This is how we wind up getting that recursive structure. But the prepositional phrase is headed by of. The complement of of links up to the p bar here. That complement is another noun phrase, the book, which we've seen before. Uh, so you just slide in that whole np under the p bar here, a picture of the book. Hopefully that makes some sense, but we're going to see a lot more examples of that sort of thing as we go. Uh, and I'll give you another chance here. Um, normally I do this in class. Uh, so I'll give you just a moment to think about this and you can pause the video if you want and try to write out what you think the structure should be for the following phrases. So um, a verb phrase, I'll start you off by saying this is a verb phrase. So often forgets his hat. What should that look like? A prepositional phrase almost in the basket and an adjective phrase very late to class. And I'll give you kind of a heads up that these are all going to be fairly similar to each other, but more importantly, they all kind of fit into that X bar phrase structure that we saw before. So specifier linking to X bar or combining with X bar to go up to XP and then X bar is broken down into X, the head and the complement after it. Okay, so maybe a simple way you can walk through it is say this is a verb phrase, off forgets his hat. What's the head of this verb phrase? It's got to be the verb itself, forgets. And the stuff that comes before it is the specifier, and the stuff that comes after is its complement. So the way you draw it out, um, we'll talk about often as a qualifier word here. So the head kind of goes straight down, VP, V bar, V is forgets. The specifier attaches or links up to the mother node at the top, the VP, and the NP complement links up to the V bar after it. So this whole thing is his hat looks the same as like the book or what the picture or whatever. Um, so this breaks down into determiner followed by an N bar N leading down to the head of that phrase hat. That works as the complement of this VP headed by forgets. And if we go to the next example, it's gonna look very similar almost in the basket. Uh, all we're changing here really are the um, kind of labels of um, the different uh, lexical categories. So uh, we're dealing with a prepositional phrase rather than a verb phrase here. The specifier is a degree word almost. The head is a preposition in, and then the complement, again, linking up to this P bar. The complement is an NP, the basket, almost in the basket, almost in his hat, often forgets his basket, often forgets the basket, so on and so forth. This is how we start to sort of just use these rules to give us slots to put different words in, right? Often in the basket, maybe. Uh, the last one is uh, maybe a little bit different because um, it's slightly more complicated in this complement structure. So very late to class, the specifier is very, it's degree word linking up to the top AP here. The head of the adjective phrase is late. <coughs> and then the complement is a prepositional phrase. And the comp prepositional phrases uh, will always have an NP embedded in them. Uh, they're headed by this preposition too. And then there's another NP here for class. Uh, just so you know, I don't think we've seen this before. This is a case of where we just have one word in a phrase by itself. Class is an NP, and then underneath that is the N bar, and then underneath that is the N. Um, there's a way to abbreviate that, but um, for now, we won't worry about it. If you just have one word in the entire phrase, just write out all this intermediate um, structure, too, for that one, uh, just to make it explicit so I know that you know what you're talking about. Uh, but this is what this particular phrase looks like. And I think that's enough um, for now to for you to worry about. Uh, and you're also at this point, I think, qualified to do the first set of practice exercises. Uh, they're not too overwhelmingly difficult, uh, but they'll get you started um, and 
in the right direction for where we, where we want to go for the next lecture. So give that first set of practice exercises a whirl. Um, send in the quick write, and I'll post another lecture tomorrow or the day after.